Welcome to this uh, live webinar. I'm Cédric Bélanger, Product Marketing Manager of Optical Solutions at ANSYS. And uh, today we are going to explore how materials impact the perceived quality of your product. For that, I'm very pleased to welcome uh, two uh, simulation experts, Mathieu Regnaud, um, Optical Engineer and Product Owner of Visual uh, Experience Solutions, and Thomas Lejeune, Good afternoon. Uh, holding an engineer's degree in micro techniques and watchmaking, and he is in charge of the development of the consumer goods market. First, Bcast, interact with us. Yes, please connect to bcast.com slash lmd1 or just scan the QR code using your smartphone. You can connect both on your smartphone or on your computer if you have dual screen. And it's very important for you and for us to to, to connect because uh, you can participate to some activities and ask your question uh, during the presentation. So yeah, please do. Okay, first a few words about ANSYS. ANSYS is a global leader in engineering simulation, addressing the disciplines of fluids, structures, thermal simulation, but also systems and recently optics. Our involvement in every major industry segment has provided us with the application know-how to help you solve your toughest problems. And finally, wherever uh, you are across the globe, ANSYS can support you with nearly 3,000 direct employees and over 2,000 certified channel partners. Of course, ANSYS is aligned with the leaders of each industry. Related to our topic today, I can mention uh, premium card manufacturers, Bentley and Jaguar. For many years now, we are in partnership to help them develop advanced lighting systems and advanced materials for the cabin of their vehicles. The optical solution of uh, ANSYS come from the, the recent acquisition of Optis. In 30 years of innovation, Optis has gone from optical simulation to sound simulation. Last year, Optis has been acquired by ANSYS and becomes part of a multi-physics and pervasive simulation platform. As an introduction, I wanted to talk about the first time I met you, Mathieu, five years ago. You told me something I had never realized. You said, Cédric, you don't see the objects. But what you see is the light reflected by the materials. This picture, these pictures uh, perfectly illustrate this principle. That's why our simulations are physics-based. We do simulate light in virtual, exactly like in reality, and we do simulate materials. We represent materials by their optical properties. By recreating the reality, our virtual simulations are predictive of what will be this reality. It's as simple as that. Indeed. This is all just about light and when, if light is just out, there is nothing to be seen. So it's all about optics and how light actually works. So let's see, f to begin with, just in three points, what's optic, how light works actually. So <coughs> in real life, you, uh, there is light. You consider light with its energy and its spectrum. That's what defines it. And it always travels in straight line. Second point is light encounters materials and its energy and spectrum, its definition is modified depending on the material it encounters. And finally, the light is gathered by the human eye and interpreted by the brain to generate a picture of actually what we see. So that's what happens in our life, thanks to uh, as described by, uh, by physics. And here is how we address it in Speos in our solu software solution. Basically, in our solution, light is uh, defined by its energy and spectrum and travels in straight line. Its path is modified by the, uh, by the material it encounters, and then it reaches a detector which integrates all the light and transfer uh, convert it to an image that we can uh, easily interpret. So. Basically, what we do in our software is just a basic application of the laws of optics and all of the laws of how we see things. And <coughs> so here's the how we pass from real-life optics to simulation. And so to describe the core of what is a simulation, let's split this and sort this out in three different categories. First, we consider what <coughs> light is, it's, uh, by it's light, the definition of the light, the definition of the material. 
and let's call this the inputs. Then de take the definition of all the light travel, straight line and travel modified by the material. We call this the engine. And finally, we defined uh, how we interpret uh, the, the light we gather to, to see the things, and we call this the restitution. All these three bricks are the core of a simulation. And if you can manage to have accurate inputs, accurate engine, and accurate restitution, then you can achieve to have an, uh, uh, an accurate vision of what life could provide, but you can simulate it. So this, uh, this is the basic that can be then used in the workflow of making your product. And I'll let Thomas explain more yes. how it's embedded. Thank you, Mathieu. So we'll see later a uh, demo about watch. So let's take this uh, example here. Uh, you start from your CAD. So um, we almost integrate uh, all the kind of CAD files. And then you scan your optical properties. You scan the material, in fact. So you will scan, start from a, a sample like that or just uh, from the existing product or from a library that we provide to you. And then you put that into the 3D engine uh, and you add your light source and camera you make the scene in fact and then you will have the simulation so the restitution part um, according to the norms you can uh, make a choice you can take a decision and it's not finished yet at this stage because thanks to uh, the physics based simulation you can re-simulate, re-use the optical properties and uh, make modification on the CAD and iterate like that uh, only on virtual mockup and until you reach your expectation. So you can collaborate on the same platform with your uh, teammates uh, from design, from R&D and marketing until the, the, proje the project is, uh, is finished. And I think we already have uh, for the first activities, uh, Michael, if you want to, to display the first one, um, we still have some, uh, we already have some uh, interesting word like uh, uh, the quality, uh, the, the quality control, uh, multiplying and uh, teamwork. So that's exactly something uh, we are working on with very experience. Exactly. So as we can see on this, uh, uh, this glimpse of a process, input takes uh, a big part in the, in the workflow of making a product. It's uh, preparing the geometry, preparing the, the material, and then through simulation, we can define if we have to modify this geometry and this simulation. So inputs is the core of this, because that's the thing you modify to enhance your product. So it's very important to have uh, inputs of very high quality. Th let's start with a uh, simple application of inputs. It's we'll focus essentially on material inputs, the optical properties of material, because that's what interacts with the light. So if I take this sample, uh, probably we can have a, a zoom on this. This sample, it's what we call an iridescent paint. So it's, its color is quite complex because it varies from, uh, from green to purple, depending on the incidence of the light that it's here. It's it. So this sample, take this sample, give it to 10 CG artists. You give them the sample, you tell them, I want a modelization, a virtual model of this, uh, this material to see how this color behaves. They, they will work with their, uh, CG, uh, their, their CG artist software to make this, looking at, the, at uh, the sample, interpret how it looks like, and then make uh, a, uh, a numerical representation, and you will end up with 10 different results, because every one of them has its own perception of the sample. They will look at it differently, they will look at it under different lighting, under different conditions, they won't see the same thing. However, if instead you provide this sample, but you give each of these uh, people a uh, measuring system. Here, for instance, we, have, we are generally using the what our OMS2, that's a scanning device which measures BRDF, that's the optical properties of material and that we scan with it, and it's a one minute scan. So this, if all of the, the people you ask are e equipped with uh, an appropriate scanning device, you will end up then they will all converge to the same result. When you want to uh, predict the behavior of your material applied on your product, you have to be accurate on the inputs and you have to take any subjectivity out. It's, it has to all rely on measurement. 
And so this can be applied to multiple kinds of materials. So here I start with uh, surface material. This picture you can see uh, on this slide, it's all computer generated using SPEOS, using ANSYS SPEOS. All of these materials were scanned uh, with the OMS2 that you can see as a virtual model here. And that's all from this actually existing material, that which are the one uh, I've got next to me. Just the same palette, the same properties, but uh, here in real, but with the, the numerical uh, equivalent in simulation. So that's for the, the surface opaque material, and that's actually the easy part. The optical properties is just how the light is reflected and in which color it's reflected. Then there is another uh, aspect of light, of matter interaction I want to focus on, is transparency. There are two ways of representing transparency in, uh, in a rendering software. Most of the rendering software are making uh, surface transparency. That's the picture you can see on, uh, on the left. It's very homogeneous red because what happens here, it's just uh, a film, a clear film of, a red, of a red, which is very homogeneous, but and the, the equivalent is real li in real life is that you apply this on your material to see what's the color. But this is not what happens in most, in most transparent material. Generally, it's we are using volume tint. So the dye that gives the material the color is, uh, is actually within the material. And it depends, the, the tint will depend on the thickness. That's what you see on the picture on the right now. Uh, and you can see that both techniques are showing are showing very different uh, results. That's something to be very careful about, and that's something. The beauty of these things, we have this approach where we separate the surface uh, properties we can see and the volume properties we can see. The beauty of this, we can mix these properties. We can combine surface properties and volume properties. For instance, if I take this this red sample. And I put, I define, decide to change the abrasion level on the uh, on the surface. For instance, if I take this sample, I have several what we call VD grade, VDI grades or shiny grades. That's the different level of uh, quantified uh, quantified unpolished aspect, different level of abrasion that can be obtained on the through the molding of plastic. These are defined by quantified numbers, that's industrial standards. And so I can just combine any of these grades, any of these level of vibration with my volume material and end up with any combination from no abrasion at all, totally polished, to the maximum level of abrasion. And I can see the evolution of the perceived quality and through simulation select what is the level of uh, <coughs> of unpolished aspect I want for my product. And this can be tested uh, an, uh, any number of time through simulation. So to focus more on the pure volume properties, another aspect <coughs> that is interesting to, to compare is knowing my samples, having my sample modelized in virtual reality, I can actually compare <coughs> for my solution and uh, see for the price, the cost of the, the material I want to select. Because if I choose a glass or plastic or different kind of plastic, the molding, the molding cost will be different. The cost of the, of the substance by itself will be different. And so I can, through simulation, identify which plastic is giving me the best uh, price to quality ratio and still provide me with the quality level I want for uh, for the PC quality of my product. So all of this can be assessed through simulation. And so all the choice of material can be defined before you even go into prototy uh, prototyping, e even when you are still in into the design process. So this is all because we are 100% physics in uh, how we modelize the, the material and the light. And absorption, volume absorption that we've uh, seen here is very specific. It's defined by an exponential law 
regarding the absorption, the reabsorption parameter, what we call extension, that's the one we can see on the first line at different level, every one being 10 times the, the, the level of absorption of the previous. And you can see that for the first, first pictures, the general transparency of just looking through the sphere is exactly the same. However, what that you can see on the surrounding of the ball is it's getting suddenly very dark. That's because it's all depending of how much material the light goes through. That's exactly what happens if you take a piece of glass, uh, a window, you look through, it's all clear, you look on the side, it has a green tint. This is exactly what appears here. And that's very important to, to understand because when you are selecting a transparent material based on a sample, uh, you have to be careful that if you have two very similar material sample, if you put it on a product which is much thicker, you may end up with very, very different results. That's even more important for uh, light, guide in, uh, light guide industry where light is propagating through meters of clear plastic. If the clear grade is not high enough, then there will be no light left at the end of the guide and the perceive quality will be awful. Same goes for for colored material. Yeah, for this example, I've got on the lower line, I've got a green material. Free green material is actually three times the very same dye, the very same color. Just the concentration of the dye inside the plastic, inside the clear plastic, is not the same. So this means, uh, with a higher concentration, th the absorption of the part uh, of the different part of the light will not be the same. That's something you can easily see on the last picture, where for smaller, you can see for 0 0.5, 1, 2, 4 millimeter thickness, for smaller uh, thickness, it's pure, it's a pure green, while a higher thickness will show more yellowish tint, while it's still the same material. And that's something we can explain through the, through the optical simulation. What happens behind this is, Light is defined by its, by its spectrum, so a white spectrum, a white light is defined by a, a spectrum covering all of the range of wavelengths of the light. And so going through different thickness of materials, we can see that the more thickness we go through, we've got more absorption in blue and red part. The green part is fine because it's a green material that let all the green through. But you can see that the blue part is absorbed much faster than the red. That's why for a much thicker material, the there is a, there is a remaining uh, yellowish part in this material, causing this change of balance of the color between red and blue, which causes this difference in the passive color of that material for different thickness, though it's exactly the same material. So on the next level of w what volume material we can model, just clear material is an example, but we have also the, the ability to modelize uh, volume scattering, which is not subsurface scattering for those who know the term. Volume scattering is the exact definition of how the light propagates through, uh, through a milky material in which only part of the light goes through, iterates inside the material, then finds a way out and gives this foggy or milky or smoky aspect depending on the, how, the, how, how the material is defined. And this can be as well simulated accurately through, through our softwares. But in the end, uh, and also another very important topic is it's not all about material, it's a lot about geometry and all material interact with each other. We've seen that material thickness have a strong uh, impact on the passive quality we're using this kind of material. Here we'll see another example of these four parts. We have four uh, clear plastic parts which will be assembled to, to form a pyramid. Let's assemble this and let's see what happens. Here are two results of putting these parts together to make the pyramid. Those two renders are different, but those two are, are very accurate and represent exactly the reality. There is just one small difference in between those two. Can you guess what is the difference? I think so it's, it's a little, little gap. Yeah. 
So the difference between those two pictures is one micron, just one tiny micron. It's the first one you can see, all the parts are in perfect contact. There is no air gap in between. It's like they are glued or they are over mold one to each other. While the next one, the second one is just put on this. So there is a very slight gap of air in between all of the parts. That's something, that's a phenomenon you can see on this picture where you see different plastic parts glued to, uh, to each other. And you can see the issue of the glue dots you can see because where the glue is, there is a perfect contact, the light goes through, while around where there is no glue, there is a tiny hair gap where the light bounces back and stays in the color of the material it comes from. And, and here the, the perceived quality is very poor. It's very poor. That's very something to, to take into, into account. Even, even if we are using uh, opaque material, well, we've, got s we've seen some uh, um, uh, volume dispersion, that's here with a perfect contact. You can see some bleeding of the green color inside the yellow part. And that's what happened with no air. The light goes straight through because it sees the same index of refraction through both plastic. Because the plastic is the same, only the dye and the absorption change. While with a one millimet millimeter air gap, the, the light sees the difference between the plastic and the air gap. And this causes uh, an internal reflection, reflection phenomenon and so the light doesn't go through the green material and gets out of uh, out of uh, of the yellow instead. And so all of these uh, properties, volume properties, uh, surface properties, all of these combined, also combined with texture and overlays or blending, through all of this characterization, all based on measurement, we can create a uh, an infinity, uh, an infinite uh, combination of this uh, material and make virtually anything through simulation. So this is all about material. It's the biggest part of the input from a simulation, but light is still essential, though it's simpler actually, because light, as I told you at the very beginning, just apply it from the geometry emitting the light, then it's defined by its power, the amount of energy it carries, then its spectrum, which is basically the color it, uh, it transports. And then uh, we add to this the intensity profile, it's the direction, the main direction it's, pro it's going to propagate to, s to start with. And also you have the possibility to define in your simulation the ambient source, being it a natural sky for the exterior accurate lighting or an interior uh, picture representing uh, your environment. So you have the, the ability to validate the perceived quality of your product in the condition of use or in the condition of selling. And so you can check that your product will be seen in, uh, in the store or in the, in the use in the way you ima imagined it. And so when you have all these inputs, light and material accurate, you can reach what we call predictive simulation. So here in this example, we've got on the left a simulation, on the right a picture of our, our office. So the office was modelized in, uh, in 3D. All, those, all the material were scanned with our uh, optical scan dev and device and applied into the simulation. Simulation run with the sun defined at the at a specified date. And then we waited for that day to take the picture on the right. And that's something you can see if you l zoom, if you look at the picture on the right, you look inside the laptop, you can see the simulation result that ran before we even took the photo in which you can see the same sun print on the floor, the same material behavior all around. And that's why we can talk about predictive rendering, predictive simulation. I insist on the word simulation because it's very different to the what most software does. Uh, that's simulation means we can quantify the difference uh, between uh, reality and simulation. And in our example, we are just next to one to one through this. Here, that's on the right. We've got uh, we've got the measurement we've taken with a photometric device, a laboratory device. 
it's energy we measure, not just what we see. And on the on the left, it's the it's the data from the simulation we've done before. And so we were we are looking at this on the same scale, and we can see we get the exact amount, the, the exact same amount of energy. So I insist on the word simulation. That's thanks to the to the engine behind our engine in Speos. It's it's managing a lot of equation of physics of optics which are very complex to apply to every single impact of any ray of light inside the simulation. But the interest is the user doesn't have to mind about these equations. All of this is managed by the software so the user can just focus on its geometry, on its material, on, this in on in the inputs of the simulations and make sure that everything will be perfect in the end for, for the virtual prototype it will be making. So this is all because Speos is matching all the equations of optics while most renderers are claiming to be r realistic. Realistic doesn't mean accurate. The same way rendering doesn't mean simulation. Simulation really means we rely on the equations of physics and optics. And we target accurate, which means we can predict through simulation what we could see in real life without any modification after uh, seeing the, the real prototype. So, because of this, Speos has been certified by, a, an <coughs> by an independent laboratory against the CIE, the, 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 the committee who is defining the laws of optics for photometry, actually. And through Speos, Speos is uh, the base to all our rendering simulations, being it in real time, so we can experience in virtual reality the dynamic aspect of our materials and also in a, in a different scale with ray tracing where we can experience the transparency reflex, uh, refraction and reflection aspect of any material and lighting and finally the space simulation that can allow to validate the, the perceived quality of your product and lighting in the, in the best condition. So from uh, so it's the user has the ability to from its model to switch from a pure virtual reality real time experience to a pure certification level to approve what the uh, what is the design is selected so i let Thomas about, uh, speak about the different application of this different scale of rendering and i'll let him uh, so yes, thank now. you Mathieu for this amazing work. Uh, just before jumping into the demo session, uh, I would like to have a quick look to you guys, to your participation on Bcast. Um, if Mika, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so the question was, have you ever used virtual prototyping in your creation process before? And you, have, you are a majority to say uh, no, 60%, and 40% uh, for yes. But there is no good or bad answer. Uh, it's just about knowing the, the trends. And we are here j uh, for explaining you um, why uh, you can trust a virtual mock-up rather than a physical one. Uh, yeah, and so let's jump into the, the next part demo. I just launched the activity number three, which is a brainstorm. So you can give uh, and type some word um, if you have some idea about the question. Uh, so for this uh, video, Mathieu, we we are we see you uh, with a special display and uh, Google on the head. Uh, so you are experiencing what we can call um, a virtual uh, test bench for materials. And um, this, in fact, you are um, trying to visualize every kind of material that are virtual, that have, have been scanned before. And uh, you can apply this material on any kind of surface uh, to see how the, the light goes, how the reflection will be. And uh, it's in virtual in a calibrated uh, box, in fact, with a special light. Uh, so in fact, the goal toward that is to have exactly the same than in, in reality. And you are in virtual reality and you can really uh, put the product that you want, drag and drop the texture or just take it and apply and see how, uh, how it will work, right? Yes, that's the, the main interest here for virtual reality is uh, mostly in rendering we tend to rely on picture that we generate, but that's actually not enough to, uh, to render accurately 
the, the, the perception of the material. If I take again the, the material, the iridescent material, it changes color when you, when you just hold it. So the reflex from most people when they analyze this material is they take the sample and they move it around to see how it looks like. That's the kind of thing we need to do to reproduce mm -hmm. in, uh, in the virtual reality environment, in the software. And for this, we need both real time. So we need to get the, the ability to grab the sample, to see it with both eyes, because on such material, you both each eye is seeing a different color because mm -hmm. it's a different point of view. And this uh, also, this inter dynamic interaction with the light where you can move the light around and see the CV effect. That's basically the same process we've got in reality when you've got a sample but you wanted to validate through virtual reality and use in virtual reality. This way you can assess multiple choice of uh, samples, try it how it looks like in virtual reality even if you don't own the sample mm -hmm. and then apply it to your virtual model and experience it accurately. And you have the stereoscopic effect from your boss eyes and 3D. Yes, so this way you are one-to-one -one, uh, scale, one-to-one -one with, uh, with the size of the object. So you have a proper glimpse of any details and texture that can be uh, incorporated, incorporated, incorporated within this material. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mathieu. Um, another kind of uh, goods that are really important uh, or material is the, the glass. For example, you see in the middle uh, a glass. When you design this kind of glass, the behavior of light is really, really important as well for the chess games, but uh, also for the, the gemstones. So uh, the gemstones, uh, you can optimize, in fact, the cut of your gemstone by using the software. And if you turn around this gemstone, you will see uh, two key point for a gem maker, uh, which are um, the fire and the brilliance. So you can see uh, that on the, the picture right on, and you can optimize the cut of the gemstone, but you can also integrate it into an assembly and uh, see the final result uh, in the assembly, in the whole assembly. So that's a key point for us. We are able to, to visualize all the, the, the assembly. For example, if you put the gemstone into a watch, um, you will have the, the final uh, simulation. Um, so when I just arrived at ANSYS, just before I was doing some uh, projects on watchmaking, and uh, from what I remind, it was mostly about believing in physical prototypes. So there was the design, there was the R&D. So the designer com came with an ID and the, the R&D team make it feasible. And then uh, you send uh, to uh, an amount of physical prototype and it's very not often that it works first rate. Uh, so you have to iterate, it costs time and, uh, and uh, money, of course. Um, and when you are doing rendering, it's just for having a quick preview, for example, for marketing purpose, or, uh, but we never take any decision on, uh, on a rendering. So that's a game changer uh, with very experience because you can straight on see if your product will match for your expectation in terms of perceived quality. For example, late let take this watch. Um, you can make a choice of material, for example, to see if the stainless steel will ma will match with the leather, uh, will match with the gold. But that's not the only use case. Uh, you can also see the magnifi magnifying glass um, and also the the gems. So it's it's hard to to see the gems because it's under a glass. So there is a lot of reflection. It's hard to guess the behavior of light, and that's a key point of the software. And there is also effect on material. Uh, you can see on the bridge um, right here, um, or right here, the Geneva pattern. It's something that we can simulate and we can make a decision on it. And I, I remind when we were uh, talking about this watch at the first time, uh, the, this is called the guillotage. And uh, we were like, no, that's too big. Uh, we, we need to reduce perception. it. Our uh, perception of, of yeah, that was. Exactly. Was yeah. And that's the, ver the version three. And only by using virtual mockup, we, we came into the, the, the version th three without any physical prototype. We were able to, to define the right size of the pattern. Exactly. So that's, that's a game changer, and you can really trust it and make decision on it and collaborate on the same platform. If you have an iteration to do, for example, if you want to modifi modify the design, that's totally possible and it takes a few clicks uh, rather than just doing a physical prototype that never works first time. Uh, yeah, so that, that was a good, a good thing.
so just a, a quick video about that. Uh, you start from PTC Creo, for mm -hmm. example, here, uh, from your CAD platform. I mean, we support any CAD file. And then um, you move into the software, just here. You create the scene. So basically, you will add your camera. You will add the material, the lights as well. We will talk about that later. Uh, so you, you, you make your scene, like in reality, in fact, like if you would have physical prototype. And then you switch. Uh, yeah, you can do configurator as well. So you can just try different matching combination of material. Uh, and then you switch to the real-time ray tracing mode. So here you send a billion of rays in a couple of minutes. And you can really see um, the, the behavior of the magnifying glass, uh, all the, the shadow, all the, and, and it's, it's real-time calculated. So you can really trust it and make decisions. And you can move, of course, because it's real time. And then you have this kind of uh, final results, which highlights uh, the product. And at this time, you can say, OK, it's good. It's enough for, for us. Uh, it's reached the expectation uh, we can produce. Or no, we have to make another iteration. We have to modify something. Uh, yeah, it's. Um, so let's move to another part. We talk about design and R&D, but we, we also work with marketing and sales. For example, if you want to do a configurator, a real-time configurator for your website, for uh, a saloon, for to show to your customer the product and uh, make him uh, choice, choosing his, his version of the watch, the watch face, that's totally possible as well. Um, so you can also do ma merchandising. For example, sometimes your product is beautiful, it's the perfect one, but you don't know how to highlight it, how to, to light it in a shop, for example, how to, to, to choose the perfect light. And that's something we can, uh, we, we can do as well uh, to, to advise you, okay, you need two or three spots or five, that's something that we can do. Um, and we are also working with Mathieu for uh, the integration of the watch uh, on the wrist in uh, augmented reality or virtual reality. And uh, also the motion of parts. So for example, if you want the hands moving or watch movement into the, uh, or movement, into the movement of the watch. Um, and uh, we are also working with the sun, so it's already done uh, with the because we are multi-physics. So you can also integrate and optimize the the sound of the watch in the case of a minute repeater. Uh, we can also work on that point. That's impressive. <laughs> and another kind of uh, application for luxury. Uh, perfume packaging, so it's a strong um, field of activities because you, as for the for the watch, you need the best quality in a short term, in short deadline. So you have to produce uh, fast and well, and that's something where we are able to to say to you, uh, okay, that your prototype will be great or it, it won't be great. Um, and for that, uh, we can, for example, uh, as you see on this picture right here, uh, we can, for example, change the surface states and say, okay. Um, the, the surface state is good or no, you have to change the VDI and uh, you can make a choice just trusting the, the virtual simulation. And at the end, you have the, the, real, uh, the real product and the, the simulation and uh, you don't even know which one is the real one and I let you guys guess which one is the real one. Uh, but for example, on the, si the simulation, we can see that um, the liquid in the edge uh, is exactly the same behavior that the real product, and that's something uh, uh, that shows the, the accuracy of the software, I think. And um, now uh, I would like just to, to close the activity number three on Bcast. So we, we had some interesting idea for R&D. Um, you talk about creating new materials or materials. Uh, for design, you, you talk about assess the impact of different manufacturing process on the perceived quality. Um, and on sales, sales uh, marketing, it was more about configurator, combination, configuration of lighting and material. So it's exactly what I, I showed just before. And uh, experiencing the products in uh, any environment. So I will 
just stopped this activity and launched the last one. And Mathieu, I think you have a, a real-time demo for yes, us. Yes, let's go live. So there is a, a perfume bottle conception of my own that I've done during my uh, ANSI space claim training. So I've modeled uh, a, 3D, uh, as a, a 3D model of, uh, of this. So it's just a bottle, the liquid inside, and the, and the cap at the top of it. And so let's look at what it looks like when we switch into progressive mode. So progressive is a new mode inside this platform. So here is the uh, VR experience. That's uh, the, the ANSYS platform where we put all the optical uh, knowledge we've got in, uh, into virtual reality. So in this, uh, we have multiple scale of rendering. ShadeX, that's the level we use for virtual reality. Ray tracing is what we use for real-time uh, mater transparent material interaction and, uh, and assessment. And progressive is a new uh, a new feature available this year is SPIO simulation, but uh, running on a uh, graphic card, running on GPU. So it's GPU accelerated and it allows to have a very, very quickly a uh, glimpse of what the real material behavior would be if we let it, uh, let it run. So here it's uh, to start with on this bottle on the cap I've set an, irid an iridescent material. So it's totally opaque material, but you can see the iridescence where it switches, it goes fading from green into purple, a bit like the, the sample I've shown, I've shown you at the very beginning of the, of the presentation. And so I can experience under different lighting conditions, under different orientation. I can even discover some, uh, some behavior I couldn't expect. For instance, through this angle, I can see some yellow tint in this material, which is actually more complex than what I could evaluate from just looking at it. So measurement brought a lot more information that just uh, visual assessment could uh, provide. But now let's uh, let's play a bit with the, the model. So let's switch this from uh, uh, from an opaque material to a transparent one. So let's put this optical polished. So I've got uh, my cap is now uh, transparent glass. It's pure glass now. I can switch it to any kind of uh, volume material. Let's take one here. Uh, let's take let's take the red one here. So just a drag and drop of the file, and directly see what is the effect. Let's take another one. This one is called topaz. Let's find the material topaz. So all of these were measured with our laboratory bench, all assessed uh, using. Uh, their actual optical properties. So here I can see clearly again the phenomenon we've, to we've talked about before. Is a good viewpoint. So you can see the color of this uh, of this material is slightly different to what you can see on the screen, except that here it's because this sample is two two uh, less than two centimeters thick while on the screen the ball is uh, more than is about five centimeters but if you look at the bottom the smaller past part you can see exactly the same color than the thickness i have in my hands and so all of this can be combined i can switch this to uh, uh to different optical properties if i move back to uh, to the pack i can have even more complex uh, complex material. If I take, for instance, now uh, this one is scanned here. This one is scanned from a, a perfume, uh, a perfume bottle box, a packaging, and it has uh, very specific behavior and uh, another iridescent with some uh, knack, uh, knack as, uh, aspect. And the uh, same goes for any kind of uh, material. Here's uh, one, uh, a funny one. If you remember the old 50 euro bills, that's the ink that was uh, that, uh, uh, describing the 50 number, how it was printed on the, the previous uh, 50, 50 euro bill. And same goes for... Uh, what, what is the ooh -la -la two scattering? That's... That's a very, very uh, fashion, uh, uh, fashion sample, <laughs> which is again uh, very iridescent with a lot of color changing, a bit like the, the very first one. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but then if I, I can as well put some uh, surfa transparent surface uh, interaction, like if I take a VDI finish, so it's an unpolished and abras abra abrasion level for, uh, for the glass, so I can see for low abrasion, I can see the blur through the, through the material. I can see it for a higher level of blur with a drag and drop, how it looks like now. With, uh, you can see the reflections are more blurred. And so all of this can be combined together and we can see every effect possible in life through this optical simulation. You can see through the uh, lower part of the glass, you can see the uh, appearing slowly the, the diffraction. You can see the rainbow effect here, like you can assess from multiple viewpoints. And as well, I could uh, I could change, for instance. Uh, uh <coughs> Cedric, you asked me this uh, this afternoon uh, if I could <laughs> s put some uh, some Bordeaux red, yeah. and actually French I have <laughs> 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 I, I have some Bordeaux. <laughs> uh, let me find it if I change this here, <laughs> so you can see now, yeah. and you can see again the volume absorption of this so you can see on the edge of my bottle because the thickness is much smaller you can see really the color why it's getting very opaque at the middle and so you can assess the wall uh, the wall behavior of uh, of this and uh, it's all of this we manipulate through the simulation and as long as we stop we we stop manipulating it all just refines and you get a clearer and clearer picture of what you'll get and uh, and so you can anticipate any aspect of uh, of your product. Thank you, Mathieu. Um, yeah, let's have a quick look for the last uh, activities on uh, Bcast. So you were 40% uh, to give your points to the accuracy to of the simulation and 40% uh, to the faster the time to market process. So it's the it's two key points that we highlight in this presentation, I think, and um, the facility of use of the software and exchange with the team for 20%. So uh, we stop the activity, and uh, if you have questions, you can ask on the wall of Bcast. Uh, and let's conclude now, right now. Sure. So as a conclusion, I would just want to highlight once again, and once again, it's simulation software that we, we do. Simulation means you, the rendering will get is not highlighting the beauty of your product, of your design intent. It's going to show the truth of what your product will look like out of production. So when, uh, so basically it means it will highlight any defects that exist in your PC of quality. In this example, the first coffee machine you can see here has a multiple flaws that could be highlighted through simulation. You can see the, the, the green card that we can see in transparency that makes a very uh, some uh, hollow in the in the lighting and you can see a lot of bleeding from the LEDs lighting uh, lighting the, the the machine and so all of this could be corrected through the virtual prototype define what are the correction to apply to the real product and then once validating the wall the virtual prototype go into production and so make sure that in the end the product you design your design intent will be matched when you release the product and your customer will get the product that you actually imagine for them thank you Mathieu and I think um, um, so if you if you want to know more about uh, perceived quality and if you are in Europe by the end of the month um, 29 and 30 January um, I think uh, that uh, uh, Marion Blanc is in Paris and have a message Thanks. for us. Yeah. Thank you, Thomas. Hello, everyone. I'm already in Paris. I'm waiting for the conference Lighting, Material and Design to be held in Paris on the houseboat Louise and Bell, the 29th and 30 on January. There are only 10 plus left. Get your cost and scale ready and register quickly online at the website lightingmaterialsdesign.com. Jump on this opportunity and see you on board. So join us.
Yeah, thank you Marion. So if you are free and uh, want to know more about passive quality, save the date, 29. Especially if you want to know more about passive yeah. quality. Yeah, 30 yeah. January. Materials. And right. uh, you have the link, you just have to type LMD 2019 in Google and you can register. Thank uh, you guys. Thank you all. If you have questions, uh, we are on Bcast, but I think we don't have any question yet but anyway we are still you can contact us on uh, our email address uh, on or on LinkedIn if you want so yeah feel free to ask your question and uh, see you soon thank you bye bye